Hallelujah. Say this, blessings come in the midst of chaos if you're paying attention. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you for this hour. I thank you, Lord, that you will lead me to say what needs to be said and that your will will be done. Let the meditations of my heart, Father, be presented. Let me be able to get to the point with brevity of speech. Let me flow and say what you would have me to say. Father, I shall pass this way but one time. So when I do it, let me not defer any good that I can show, any kindness that I can show any compassion that I can show, any forgiveness that I can show, any understanding that I can show. Let me not defer, shall I, for I shall never pass this way again. So let me make the best of this moment. Father, so much is in me. Help me just to be comfortable with the flow to get out what you want me to say. Give me strength and let the rest of what we do today be blessed. God, there are people who are watching right now. As I'm able to share certain things, Lord, let them get what they need. I thank you. All those in agreement said amen. amen. And everybody's got a thing. And some don't know how to handle it. So now there's some things that we have that we don't know how to handle. Always reaching out in vain, taking in things that's not worth having. Don't you worry about a thing. We can't really say that Don't you worry about a thing. because our life becomes dominated with worry, Don't you worry about a thing. dominated with anxiety. Don't you worry about a thing. Yet we say we trust our creator. Don't you worry about a thing. But today it dies. Don't you worry about a thing. Why? Because God answers. Don't you worry about a thing. So now how do we keep from worrying? Let's pass out. My chart with the clouds, please. I learned in this last set of trials and the trial before the last set of trial, I just went, I'm going through. Say this, you can't live and not go through. And so I went through a trial with some business people and they were trying to strong arm us. And I had to choose not to fight on their terms. Say the high road. Now, you can try to draw that on the outside somewhere around the circle of your chart. The chart with the clouds. With the chart with the clouds. Well, let's just do this. Let me see the chart with the clouds. Do y'all have that up here? I don't see it. It's not here. Or is it? Please take it out for me. Oh, I'll just take this from you. Okay. So I'm going to go number one. Number two. Number three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Six years ago, I had to make a decision, and that was, 
if you're going to continue to do this, you're going to have to close some doors. And you're going to have to become more spiritual. And so if you pray for patience, God will allow you to be in traffic. If you pray, God, help me with my anger problem, then God will allow people to come into your life to provoke you to what? Anger. So if you're praying for righteousness, expect darkness to be your prayer partner. Status quo. Status quo, normal. This is where your awareness is limited. Limited awareness. Everything is normal. You're just in this world. See, I had to learn never judge a man or a woman by the middle of their journey. You have to wait until it has completed. Because if they're living their life, part of the middle is the stuff that God deals with. So that by the end of your journey and you're at convergence. That's why it says, though a righteous man falls seven times, don't touch his stuff. Because I, God, am with the righteous man or the righteous woman, and they will rise again. And so everything is normal. And then you have the call. The scripture says many are what? But what? Now, when you have the call, that's when you begin to realize something needs to change. Something needs to what? Change. But you're not sure because many of us didn't have someone to walk with us on this journey. And parenting was so arbitrarily, arbitrary with different families that there was no boilerplate in terms of raising. Everybody did it themselves the way they saw necessary. When you know that there's a need for change, you get to the refusal of the call. I just want you to know that whenever you receive a call from God, it's often uncomfortable. Because a call from God means that you're going to have to give up some part of your life. A whole part of your life. And so when a lot of people refuse the call because they want to live for them. I'll just say this now. What would happen had my time been given to fan do or fantasy football? What would happen if I had Ben's doing ESPN? When you got a call, all of a sudden, God has to challenge you. How important is this football game to your mindset? How important is this movie to what you're going through? Sometimes you got to grow up so you can wake up. When you go through the refusal of the call, the reason you're refusing the call is because of fear. You're refusing the call because of fear. Resistance of your soul. Resistance of your one. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. Your spirit. I'm going to put a handle there, handle there. And we said, God is at the top. Satan 
not Satan. We've learned in the Hebrew, Satan, which means to be trapped, surrounded by the fence and the strength of the snake's deception. So when you say, I rebuke you, Satan, you're saying, I rebuke you, Satan, the deception that you are surrounding me with, causing me to sin. Hamartia miss the mark. So sin is also a trapping of the feet, causing you to stumble. And so therefore, when the door is open here, you have fear. The door handles are on the inside, which means choice. You have to make the decision on whether or not you're going to close the door or not. Keep going, baby. My phone is on, but I don't feel like looking for it. We refuse to call, then God will send you a guru, a mentor, several guides. And their goal is to help you overcome what you can't see within yourself. The goal of the mentor is to get you to understand you may have walked in this church unable to read, but the goal of the mentor is to get you to see that you're so much better than that. And to get you to see. He said, Peter, you are the rock. He called him Peter, which meant the rock, the foundation. A mentor has to see into disciples what they can't see. I'll use it again. I would never want to fight Will. I would shoot Will. I would not fight him. <laughs> and I would catch him by surprise and make a deadly shot on the first go round because he has the killer instinct. And so do I. But I'm 42, and he's still young, so he must be shot. <laughs> I know that's not pastoral, but you should know that by now. But our first encounter, he was working on some business plans, and he had a professional doing something with him, and she wasn't giving him his work. And he started talking all these different things, and I realized, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. He's not a confronter. Now, he had the biggest body, everything, and I hate him sometimes in a good way. But he wouldn't talk to this woman. And I said, did you say that? The same thing I said with this woman over here called my wife, my queen, my guru. She would do this talking. I said, did you say that to him? No, I didn't say that. I said, then you didn't communicate. I had to teach her how to confront without being angry. Ask the, and how to talk to men and get the information out. That's why she's respected. So I challenge Will, and I say, Will, first God shows the mentor what's happening. When the mentor knows your name, he also knows your game. She knows your game. And so our pivotal conversation, because I've done it with uh, Jermaine Norman from Times Square. No, Jermaine Norman, he was Times Square and South Africa. That's how committed I was. I was calling him from South Africa, sitting in a hot tub, spending all kinds of money on international phone, trying to disciple the craziness out of him. <laughs> so 
So I called you up. And as a mentor, you got to go ahead and speak the unspoken and trust that they're going to either hear it and not be totally broken. So I said, Will, I don't know if you hear this, but I want you to hear it, man. That's that punk spirit, man. That's that coward. A friend of mine said, why do you call it a punk spirit? Say, on this journey, I'm going to need, I'm just going to put it here, determination. Now, the reason I'm getting you to say that is that you're going to need to have the right mind about yourself. So that when you make the determination, you make that determination based upon good wisdom, good knowledge, and good information. But now what we're getting ready to discover is that, and let me talk about determination and the punk spirit. We'll do that again. I went walking with my wife a couple of days ago and this past week and it was a little more difficult than normal and she didn't know she says can you walk a little faster I just looked at her and I said she don't understand but I'm going to go ahead and give it to her so I started walking I said I'm going to walk but I'm not going to talk I didn't even notice this many people in here. My God. I have this thing now that I minister to an audience of one and I normally don't look at the audience until I know I am completely in the spirit of God. Whew! I don't even want to look back up again. You're going to have to remind me what I was saying. I have no idea what I was talking. Huh? Determination. Thank you. Come on. Jeepers, just give me one more second. <laughs> what you all don't know is due to my upbringing, and I'll talk about it in a second. I have had to overcome a negative sentiment override which means that I can often see the negative before I could see the positive because that became a way to survive. And so I minister by an audience of one. The only person I'm here to please today is God. Amen. It's Superman time. <laughs> so I've been wearing Superman socks because it's Superman time. And I tell myself periodically, Superman time is supernatural time. See, I don't know if y'all can see this, but I got a cape on the back of my socks. There's a cape coming out the back of my socks. Because wherever my feet walk, it's supernatural Superman time. I met a sister in Uber, in Uber yesterday, her name is Kimmy, and she played this song. I said, I've spent 27, 30 years trying to prove I'm not a bad man. 
Yeah, I've had my issues. I said, but uh, God has blessed. And you're playing this song, I Know Who I Am. Now remind me, what was I talking about before I said Kimmy? I'm serious. Right, so seven days later, I go do the GoFundMe, I do the GoFundMe page. I am disturbed. It took Jay to say, I know you ain't going to put nothing out like that unless it's serious. And the best moment is when I'm sitting there and I'm talking to him. And I'm realizing God did it. Because I ain't talking to the J. I saw the good in him. And I said he did it. Because he had two men. And I said the day you reconcile that anger. And that J. You going to be the man. Because you got more than what I got. And he did it. And then he said to me something, because I want y'all to hear this before. I'm going to teach my message. But you showed up, so you, knew, you get to hear a story. <laughs> he said, you know I didn't have a father. So every, this is afterwards. Everything I taught my sons is what you taught. And he led me the whole way. And then Glenn, and then Mo Francis, and then DeMond, and then all these people. Day seven, I woke up at 2.30 in the morning overwhelmed, saying, God, I'm loved. I couldn't believe it. And I had just taught a message the week before. It's all in my head. And I said, ain't nothing like what I've been thinking was true. We all grow. And I said, baby, we did it. We did it. We left our jobs. Well, she left her job. I was already <laughs> doing my thing. And then Toyota Tercel, she said, Deron, I just want to know, are you going to get a job? I said, baby, I hear God calling me. Just give me two years. Give me two years. Oh, my God, I'm not looking out here no more. <laughs> I am not looking out here no more. I said, give me two years. And if God doesn't show up, I'm going to handle my business. But I know he has called me. There's a group of people who are sold out, living, delivered, in everlasting righteous service. And I'm believing we're going to connect with some people. See, I now know I was never supposed to hold on to anybody, but the congregation is like scaffolding. Everybody helps build the building to a certain stage. But when the building is done, the scaffolding is taken off and the building is left. But if you are connected to the scaffolding that helped build it, you want the scaffolding to be around because you said, hey, you was here to build the building. And God says, no, they got to go build other buildings. They got to go advance the kingdom. 
They got to go become the head of the prison. They got to go get their masters. You got to start a church. You got a controlling pastor. So therefore, God going to have to break them. But as Paul would say, send me Barnabas. He's profitable to me. Call Barnabas. We separated for a second. Because we all had to grow up. And we all had to realize we was flowing in the supernatural. And when you flow in the supernatural, you get hit hard. You get hit repeatedly. And you got to be able to take it. You got to run with what? Horses. Lord, teach me to what? Die. That's why I'm alive. <laughs> it needs to be brought. It needs to be brought. Because I know God brought it. Y'all listen to me. <laughs> I know who I am, Kimmy. I told you, I said, Kimmy, I think there's some people coming, but I have no idea. No, stand up. I want you to see something because you don't know these people. I can tell you her story, her story, his story. What I always remember about Mo Francis, he's the first one I said some mean stuff from the pulpit in Capitol Plaza and called him out and didn't realize he was a thug. And after that message, he pulled me to the side and said, hey, man, uh, I respect you and all, but uh, you can't, you know. And I had to say, okay, he's got a gun. I'm going to leave him alone. I can look at everybody, look at that. In the play, yes, I can remember all of you all. And listen, y'all, you know what this was about? God said, I'm going to bring a group of people together. And I'm going to give them the best that I can give them. And then they're going to multiply. Because all y'all got was our philosophy. Oh, Warren, shut up. <laughs> shut up. This is stupid. <laughs> this is stupid. I quit. Can I just teach my message? I ain't going to look out here no more. Whew. It's hard to overwhelm me. Number five is that after this, you cross the threshold. You cross the what? Threshold. I had to come to a conclusion that my life was a journey. And that when you cross the threshold, number six, you're crossing into the unknown. See, but if you don't have somebody to talk to you, if you don't have a mentor to challenge you, when you cross this threshold, what ends up happening is it's into the unknown and you have to get to the point that it's time for transformation time. Say, my transformation, my transformation comes, from comes from where I do not know. That's why I am told in Ecclesiastes, cast your bread upon many waters because you don't know which one is going to prosper. And as soon as you cross that threshold, this is where Unknown, you meet tests, allies, friends, and shapeshifters. I don't feel like spelling all shapeshifters. And you meet a different group of people. Some betray, some criticize, some talk about, some do this. Some do that. Say that's normal. But if we were never prepared, my friends, to walk this journey, then what happens is we learn to allow, and I'm just going to put right here, the unknown is about triggers. It's about what? 
Triggers are the things that make you shut down. Triggers are the things that make you go off. Triggers are the things that make you cuss people out. Triggers are the things that cause you to be provoked. And if you're not careful, triggers become people. Without an education, we learn to associate people with the trigger, which is the emotion. And the reason we can't master our emotions when God says take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ is because the trigger has become a person. And so now we avoid the person as opposed to facing the energy that the trigger represented. But if you were never taught how to deal with your emotions, you learn through trial and error. And so the goal of true Leadership and the goal of being a true believer is to be able to make sure that the door is closed and you're not triggered. Because the only way, say the only way I'm going to make this journey is I'm going to have to have determination. But I can't have determination with both doors open. Bring that chart up with both doors open, please, with the spirit, the flesh, and the whole nine yards. I started doing this in the beginning of the church, and sometimes when you're beginning again, he says, start over with the foundation. God is at the top. Satan is at the bottom. Hebrew, Satan, Satan, to be trapped by the strength of the fence. So there, Hamashia, you will miss the mark. You got God at the top, Satan at the bottom. You got your spirit, your mind, your will, and your emotions are a part of your soul. Your body is your sight, sound, smell, touch, taste. And so therefore, the door is open at the top and the door is open at the bottom. If you put that little circle right here and the circle right here, that means that the door handle is on the inside. Can't nobody do it for you. You got to do it on your own. Say this is about choice. It's about what? It's about what? And listen, in it being about choice, bring that back up, please. In it being about choice, bring the next one up if you don't mind. Most of us, our doors are closed to God, but open to darkness. Don't see Satan or Satan. See it from an ancient perspective. It's the energy of the deception of the snake. And most of us don't see that when our door is closed to God, and it's open to our flesh, meaning I, it's open to the I'm going to do me, speak my voice part. Then what's going to end up is confusion. Next one, please. If you open your heart to God and your heart to darkness, you're carnal. They call them carnal Christians. Because they have two sets of books. If the situation is here, they follow this. If the situation is here, they follow that. I just, let me just go ahead and do it right now. Say, I'll say, this is my higher nature. This is my lower nature. Let's go to Deuteronomy. Chapter uh, 30, please. Verse 11. Verse 11, reading out of the Amplified. Go ahead. For this commandment. Try it again, please. For this mic. Turn, turn the mic up, please. Go. For this commandment, which I am commanding you today, is not too difficult for you, nor is it out of reach. It is not a secret hidden in heaven that you should say, who will go up to heaven for us and bring it to us? So that we may hear it and obey it. He said, it's not a secret where you try to figure out who going to go to heaven and get this blessing for you, this word. Keep going. Nor is it beyond the sea that you should say, who will cross the sea for us and bring it to us? He said, it ain't so far. You know how big the sea is? He said, it ain't so far away that you're waiting for it to be brought from beyond the sea. Keep going. So that we may hear it and obey it. So that we may what? Hear it and what? Oh, so what I want you to put up here, God is about the voice. 
Either you're going to hear God's voice or you're going to hear the voices of other gods. Either you're going to hear God's voice or the voices of other gods. Depending on whether you've closed the door or not. Keep reading, brother. But the word is near you. It's very near you. In your mouth and in your heart. I think you misread that. But the word is very near you. Turn his mic up. I, I think he's seeing too. But the path. word is very near you. So the word that you need for the next moment of your life is overseas. Hmm. It's on the other side of town. He said it's very what? Near you. Very what? Near you. But then he shows you how close your blessing and prosperity is. Read it again, my friend. But the word is very near you. Mm -hmm. In your mouth and in your heart. Where is it at? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Do me a favor. Everybody stop and just look around real quick for the word. Look for the word. <laughs> just look for the word. There. Where, where is it at? In your heart and in your heart. I'm going to say it again. You need a word. Where is it at? So the next time you find yourself saying something stupid, next time you find yourself speaking in an attitude, next time you find yourself cussing, <laughs> cussing your daughter out, the next time you find yourself going crazy, the next time you find yourself giving full vent to your anger because they deserve to hear what you got to say, where is your word at? Fresh water and salt water don't come out of the same place. Mm -hmm. And so God had to challenge me and in my house and there's things that we don't say out our mouth in the house. I said, Jill, she mentioned something else. I said, we talked about it. But listen, I don't want to talk about that anymore. The only time you can bring that back up again is if you recognize that there's danger, and then that's when you tell me. But outside of that, I will not have a casual discussion about something that is just that important. Say, because I, I don't know. Say, I don't know the outcome. I don't know the outcome. One act of disobedience. God. I'm going to have to launch this GoFundMe page. And my pride said, I ain't never needed this kind of assistance. But what I don't know, he said, if I be lifted up. I'm almost there. asked the guy earlier, what would have happened had I decided to be an ESPN football junkie? Would you be blessed? <laughs> Kia sent me a text, Mrs. Kia Terrell. There's seven of you all. I may not know your names, but I learned your spirits. And I told Jill the night before last, I said, I'm crying because every time I saw her eyes, I said, God, bless her. Every time I saw Yolanda, I said, Father, bless her. Every time I see certain sisters, I said, God, bless her. So what were we going to talk about? And so I just cried over that. But before that, before that. There you go. See, I ain't even got no more Shane in the game. All right. I am Shabbat. Togon, the Chinese warrior. I have beaten everyone in the land. And it is now my turn. That's more African than Chinese, but it is now my turn. Ooh. And 
and I am on my way on my path and I am walking. What is it, my friend? And I am opposition. You can walk where you think you're going to walk. But what you ain't going to do is walk by here. Because if you walk by here, one of two things going to happen. Yay, nice sword. <laughs> What's going to happen is you're either going to pull that sword out and you're going to kill me with it. Or you're going to drop down to your knees and crawl underneath my legs. But I guarantee you one thing. You better be better than me when you pull it. Because ain't no other way but them two ways to get past me. This I promise you, bruh. What you won't do. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Get on. Get on. Get on. Come on. <laughs> Pump. Go ahead, look at him crawling. On, Pathetic. Ain't no warrior I seen ever crawl like that. No, no, ain't nobody tell you get up. Keep crawling, fool. On, Keep crawling. Crawl back. On, crawl back. Crawl back. Don't, don't let these people get you killed, bro. You know they don't know nothing. That's your mouth. That's right. Walk on. Walk on. Years later, the warrior was asked, because he told no one, why did you crawl? And why did you let them humiliate you like that? He said, because I knew, had I gotten back, they would have executed me. And I wouldn't be where I am today had I fought in the flesh. So I humbled myself. Because I'm here today. Yes. And the man I prayed to be, he's here. Yes. Oh, yeah. Now watch this in the spirit. What you don't see is that there is very few things more humiliating than to ask a man to crawl through the legs of another man in a public forum. In the spirit realm, there are things that God has asked you to do that you refuse to see because too much pride says somebody going to talk to me a certain kind of way if I happen to humble myself that kind of way. And so what I refuse to do is to open that God door so that I can hear what it is that he's trying to say because over here on the door that I've been hanging with, I'm comfortable with handling situations the way I'm going to handle situations if you come at me like that. But the problem is that for the true warrior, for the true warrior, you just got to know that you know how to fight. You just have to have an internal knowing. I already know how to fight. He might be better than me. I might be better than him. But what is going to be the true outcome? What do I stand to lose if I actually engage in that fight? See, the true warrior knows when to fight and when not to fight. See, my pride will tell me that I, I'm good enough to beat all of you. But see, the true warrior of God knows that in order for me to get from point A to point B, and point B is where he is. Point B is where who is? Where God is. Point B is where your blessing is. Point B is where your healing is. Point B is where your right mindset is. But I don't get there if I keep fighting the way I know to fight. I have to become comfortable with being uncomfortable with taking God's directions and not knowing what's coming next. Because until I take that type of obedience and walk in the spirit of uh, and walk in the spirit of trust, then I'll never see what's truly on the other side. And if I never truly walk God's way, then guess what? Here's what you can't say anymore. Here's what you can't say. You can't say that you're living a real godly life. Yeah, that, that hurts to hear, but you can't say I'm I'm all in spirit. No, you in a spirit. 
but you ain't in the spirit. Because if I'm a true warrior of Christ, and if you're a true warrior of Christ, humility is the only way. It's the what? Only way. Come on, D. So all I'm going to say is um, when many of us crossed paths, we were young. Some of you, I'm only four years older. Some of you, I'm younger. And Jill and I, we have concluded we gave the best that we could give. And I read the first. Mm. And I read the first seven chapters of Psalms. And for the first time, I understood the warfare of anybody who was on the front line. I ain't got an unforgiven bone in my body. You know why? And, and I haven't had unforgiveness for quite some time. Because I need God. And I need to be pure. He told me don't say nothing else. So, of course, I'm so glad to see you all. I'm so thankful to God for you all. The blessing about the word and what life is like for this God that we serve, what he's like, who he is, who you serve. I told him on Wednesday, there's no such thing as a man upstairs. There ain't no man upstairs. This is the creator of the universe that we're talking about. So I just want to take you through just a couple of trips, if you all don't mind. The thing about disciples, and the thing about those who are your disciples, those people who God connected with you, it is our job, and it has always been, this, it's always been that, to immerse you, baptize you in the name of Jesus. But Jesus is not a man upstairs. Jesus, we're talking about baptize you in the name, in the character of God, in the name of love, in the name of forgiveness. This is the second baptism. This is forgiveness personified. Ain't nobody in this room because they didn't have to let something go. Ain't nobody in this room because they didn't have to let something go. You know why Paul was a mighty teacher? Because he knew he was a sinner first. And if we all knew we were sinner first, we would have never had to come here. But when you forget that you were a sinner first, you think you can judge somebody. See, Jesus could send Paul to do a mighty work. He said, I sent you out to turn that them from darkness to light. Only a sinner can do that because he or she knows both sides of the story. See, I know what your relationship is with God by the way you judge. See, you treat people the way you treat yourself. It's as a man thinking, so is he. So this is the baptism of the soldiers. Baptized. Cleanse, cleanse from unforgiveness, cleanse, cleanse. Now watch what happens to your life now, because could nobody do that until you came back here? He started it with me, he's got to end it with me. I know that, I know that. You know that. You just had to walk in it. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And when he said, my 
words, I near you in Deuteronomy, what he's saying is, it's because of your mouth. It is your mouth that is separating you from me. Because of the words you choose, but if you let your mouth speak life, then you will see somebody get up and live. When your mouth speaks life. The power is in your tongue. It's in my tongue. And when you decided to change your tongue, the whole world will see the new you. But you couldn't become new. And I couldn't become new until God reconciled every gift that he brought together. It has to happen. It had to happen for the glory of our Father. You can't heal nobody un unhealed in unforgiveness. That's what Jesus came to bring. You think you're worshiping a person, you're worshiping a name. A way. You are a follower of a way. So this is what he said. He said at some point, This is what I had against you, Ephesus, the church of Ephesus. He said, you got a whole lot of things going on, but you forgot your first love. You know what he said? You're becoming afraid of what I gave you to deliver you. You have lost your perception of me. You think something is happening to you, to you outside of my will. You don't love me like you used to. When did you fall in love with me? When you was in the wilderness and you couldn't get yourself out, you fell in love with me and you praised me. Hey. Psalm 106. Did you praise me. You are losing your love for me because you are afraid now of trials and tribulation. You are afraid to go in the wilderness where I give you instructions. That's where we, that's, listen, that's where we make our mark. And over offense, afraid of a little pain, you fell out of love with me. Because you deemed me as wicked when you went through. You called my works the works of the devil. You said it wasn't me. It was me. It was me. It was me. I was washing you. I was teaching you to depend on me. I was showing you how to close the door to Satan. I was instructing you. I was strengthening you. I was going to show you fire and lead you by the clouds and the fire. But somewhere along the line, we started listening to that world because the door was open. And the world told you that when, you, when, when God comes along, you ain't going to feel nothing. Ain't nobody gave, went in labor and gave birth to anything without some pain. Don't let pain be your God and don't let hurt be your deity. Come on now. Too, too much living small. You are more than conquerors. There has to be more than a scripture. You know why I'm talking like this? Because if this is my last time to talk to you, I want all my children to know this truth. I want anybody God sent to me to know this truth. You have had let your hurt feelings, your pain, your emotions, and your sadness get in the way of God. And that door that's open to Satan, and that door that's open to God, whenever God is talking about your heart, he ain't talking about your heart as you see it. He's talking about your inner self. The center of all of who you are. And when that door is open to Satan, and that door is open to God, it's your opportunity. Are you going to choose to let Satan direct and lead the center of you, the best part of you? Why do you think one of the, the fruit of the spirit is self-control? You lost the self-control, the lack thereof. He says, so now, here's the best part of you. It is your mind, your will, and emotions. Control it. You have the power to do it. 
How do you control your emotions? It's all in how you tell the story. How are you going to tell your story? This is a wonderful reunion. You know why? Because, Jay, you told a story. Simply because you told a story. And then somebody else latched on and told a story. But everybody knows that the story you're telling right now has, was the same story from back then. Come on, let's, let's, let's go on and leave it all on the table. Whatever you're saying now was true when you wasn't saying it. Come on now, get clean. Let's go higher. Let's tap into our higher self. Why do I want you to hear that? Because I want you to hear what God said. I want you to know how much power you have in your words. Your words can, your words can tear something all apart that was good to you. But your same words can bring them back together. All you got to do is decide who you're going to let lead your mind, will, and emotion. Will it be Satan? Will it be offense or will it be forgiveness and love? Both stories were always there. It was to my choosing. I choose to think the best of you no matter what. I'm good. I choose to think that to lead anybody, I choose to believe that you can. I choose. And you get to choose that too. So he said, the day that you can reconcile both parts of you, the day that you call Satan, the opposition, adversary, that's a spirit, that's not a name, as you call names. The day you can see the adversary as your teacher, the adversary will teach you what not to do. The adversary will teach you what's not good for you as a teacher. And you're at odds with yourself because you keep calling your teacher a liar. Your teacher's a liar when he gets mixed up in the flesh. But Paul said it this way, turn this man over to Satan so he can teach him, not the blasphemy, that's love. Turn this woman over to Satan so that he can, he can uh, uh, discipline her flesh so that her spirit may live. The day you stop fighting that with you, we'll stop fighting that with each other. And then God said it this way. And then if two of you agree on anything, ask me whatever. But you got to get to the point where you are not in disagreement and conflict with yourself. You're in conflict with yourself. Because you think you're good and evil. I'm just me. I'm just me. And that door to Satan. It may never, it may close, the, it may not be closed until the day I die, but I'm going to keep closing it. Every time I'm instructed to close it, I'm going to close it. Time to wrap it up. But I ain't learned everything, never, and neither has you. So he said it this way, listen. I gave everybody in this room some talents. Everybody has some. And I'll increase them as soon as you use the ones that I gave you. The biggest talent that he ever gave, gave you was a talent to love to forgive, and to speak life. To use his voice to change the world. Not your voice, not what you've been through, not what your mama did. He told the children of Israel, and this is where I end on, I know I'm going over. He'll tell the children of, thank you, baby. He'll tell the children of Israel this, I know what you've been through, but when you talk to your children, this is what I want you to say. I was in Egypt, and I was a slave. But he brought me out. He brought me out. He delivered me. That's how you not lose your first love. But when your story becomes about what they didn't do in Egypt, and all the, the, the small little details of what you went through and the pain you felt in Egypt, he said, that's Egypt's story, but here's my story. I brought you out. I want you to tell, I don't want to talk about how much you made bricks out of mortar to your children. I want to tell you, tell them how I separated the seas and took you through and brought you to the other side. Praise me. 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 I brought you out. And the day you forget me, you forget him. Because he used me to bring you out. The day you curse me, you curse him. 
because he used this gift and this breath to bring you out. That's why you honor your mother and your father. Otherwise, your life will be cut short. That's why you honor them, not in the flesh. Who did he use to help give birth to you? Don't you ever forget it. I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about the flow that'll be stopped. Because you think you got an opinion. And I think I have an opinion. Not so. Not so. Not so. God called Paul a sinner. Because he understood that when that sinner met some other sinners, he would have some mercy. He would have some grace. And he would know what it's like to be on the other side. And you know that there are things that humans do because you do. And ain't nobody got to be in the room shining no light on you for you to know the truth about yourself. That God in you will do that. So with all that said, let's praise our God from whom all flesh is flow. To whom we owe all allegiance. To who saw us in darkness and called us into his wonderful light. Let's praise our God who never sleeps nor slumbers. Let's praise our God who's full of mercy, compassion, love, forgiveness, and truth. Let's praise our God. You ready? There ain't no word higher than his word. He has the only flawless word. Amen. And it is able to heal. It has the power, a double-edged sword, to finish the job. So if anybody got cut today by the other side of that sword. Let me jump in. God bless you. God bless you. For the healing, God bless you. Mo Francis. God bless you. Mo Francis. Mo Francis, Tony Saunders, don't go nowhere, Mo Francis, Tony Saunders, I went to go use the restroom and he spoke, turn this on man, turn this on, turn this on. Mo, I heard it. Jay, I heard. Any other pastor that came out from under me. And you know what he told me, Mo? He said, we are sons of men. And he says, we all come together. You teach. I teach, you teach, and we come because we have a philosophy of following God. You raised your four sons with your wife, and you did it. Mo, you made the turn. I don't know who else is here, but he says, now, let's just give the devil a black eye. What's up, baby? And say, now, let's just go take, let's just go take the city. It's just time to do it now. <laughs> I told you we'd get together in God's speed. <laughs> hey, hey, Ron, I just want to know, do you need a Gladys Knight for them pimps? Huh? No, no, I was going to that, too. I'm, I'm gonna just say, joking, y'all. No, listen, I was going to that. I just wanted to get that out, but you my guru. Don't around, please. Don't put me in it. But just watch this. Y'all will put it together. I'll pray on some couple of topics. We all got a life to tell. I'm not going to, I don't even think I'm going to give you a topic. I think we should just all show up. Called Sons of Men. Because you're a champion, dude. He better than me. I always told you he was better than me. Yeah, you can shake your head all you want, but you're better than me. 
Hey, y'all, I'm just going to say this to everybody, and I'll hug as many of you as I can. But I'll just say this. You think we helped you. You helped us. You helped us more than we helped you. And ain't no love lost. Because you know what? I used to make this statement. We're going to get the devil. And we're going to lock him up in the back and sell tickets. Well, I have since been delivered from that one. I don't mess with him like that no more. But what I do know, we're going to rebuke him off of the brothers. And what do I know more? We ain't even got to talk because we got the same language. Lord, teach me to die. I let it go a long time ago. And I'm grateful for this. You know I'm grateful? Because you don't know outcomes. And in my lifetime, I got to realize I'm a good man. Yeah. I ain't going nowhere no time soon. Because I'm getting ready to start evangelism up. I stopped for about four years. But I got 12 weeks, so that is at least 12 different demons per week that I'm going after. I love you. Jay, come here, man. Come here, Jay. I don't know who else is out here. I know all your names. I ain't got time. I'm too old for all that. Enjoy your flowers while you're alive, man. Amen. Good. I'm good. <laughs> this man became a great son, a great man of God, and he did it. And I'm so glad that you reached out to me seven years ago and we reconciled because we didn't know this moment was coming. And you wrote me a letter, and I'm so glad I was getting ready to teach, and the Spirit said, go to you. Mo, I didn't come to you because I got to take it one step at a time. But it's time, man. Pat Richmond and Ingrid Lewis and all the, I've been hearing these names, Byron Lewis. Hey, Byron, you still scared to sing? Because <laughs> I really wanted to ask you to sing something. I said, but I ain't trying to replay Come here and grab the microphone. I thought, I said, I don't know if I want to ask him that. Just say something, just so I can be remembered. Go and get a microphone. Don't start now, but now you got all brave. Where do I go from here? Make my pathway clear. For I need your direction to make the right selection. Lead me and I'll follow wherever you lead. Oh, lead. Where do I go from Nobody. I don't think for nobody, but I love you. I love you. He couldn't do that 20 years ago. <laughs> I'm done. I'm going to sit my butt down before I faint. Hey, Riv, brothers and sisters in ATL, I don't know if they showed this, but I got Riv, Renee, Zach, Tony, uh, it's a whole bunch of people there in Atlanta. Hey, y'all. Y'all prayed for us. It ain't over. It's, le it's legacy time. Now, I still got medication, and it takes my strength, but my spirit is still good. Jay, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you.
when I was going through, Mo kept reaching out to me and said, I just want you to know, man, I love you. And I just couldn't tell you what I was going through because I couldn't talk about it because it was too emotional. But that day you came to church and you said, hey, man, I need you. I said, I need you. And you're here. And then I, are we, was we married on the same day? Mm-hmm. <laughs> See, you know, I ain't started doing Facebook book till a month ago. Oh, <laughs> and so I went on Facebook. I don't know how to reply. Is that Pat Gwaltney? <laughs> I thought I saw it. There you go. You're the fourth person I've ever responded to on Facebook. <laughs> I'll never know what you say because I don't know how to go back and read <laughs> what the rest is. But when I saw, what's your wife's name? Tosh. When I saw, I know she's here. When I saw Tosh, I was like, man, she looked good. And then I told Jill, I said, I think we was married on the same day. Because I don't know what to look at on Facebook. They got so many crazy stuff. I just be trying to find the video I'm supposed to look at. But you did it too, man. You did it too. Thank you. You went from the street to a man of God. You did and fellas, I led you the best I knew how. I did the best I knew how. And just, if I had some character flaws, no, they're gone now. <laughs> but I did the best I knew how. And sisters, I loved you like a father. I'm going to sit down now. As you take your seats, we're going to move towards a prayer. Take a seat. Now, this is who I want to pray for and I want to pray with. I want every sinner saved by grace to stand to their feet. (laughs) I want every sinner saved by grace to stand to their feet. Take your seat for a minute. I want to make it even more personal. I want anybody in this room who had to love somebody past their faults. Your children, stand to your feet. You know why I'm saying this, Jermaine? Because I want every one of y'all to know what you got inside of you. You know how to do this. You know how to do this. And you better know how to do it. Because if you don't, when your children need you, you ain't going to have nothing to give them. Because I promise you, they're going to let you down. Trying to get up, they're going to let you down. Take your seats. Is there anybody in this room who said, God, the flow of my heart and my spirit, it's not moving like I know it could in you. And I just want to leave some things here, but I want to do it in front of these witnesses. My family, these witnesses. They came from different places, these witnesses. That's you, stand to your feet. We would love to pray with you. Loose me, God. Loose me. The prayers of the righteous avail of much. Don't miss out. It took some righteous people to come in here today. Some people in right standing with God. Some people who may have been a little to the left in one day in their life, but they just kept moving to the right. They kept moving to the righteous place. And then when God called out to you, you showed up. That's a wonderful place to be. All he asked for us to do is to love and to move according to our ability. And he knows what your ability is, and so do you. So I told people, I ain't lowering no bars for you. I can't lower the bar for you. I believe in you too much. Even if you don't believe in yourself, I can't do it. It would be a sin for me to do that. Jill, you hard. No, no, no. I see you here. I'm sorry. Want me to apologize because I saw you here? I make no apologies for believing that you were better than how you was carrying yourself. I pray that God makes no apologies to the world when I wasn't living up to my highest potential. But like Peter the Rock, I'm glad he called me to it, even though he knew I had a few more mistakes in me. Peter did a whole bunch of his stuff after he was called the Rock. 
But you think Jesus called him less in anything that he knew he could become? I won't do it. I won't do it. Can't love like that. It's too defeated. So all of you saints in here, just a sinner saved by grace, pray with me. Bow your heads for these people who stand here who is just like us. We travel through this place. We ain't have it all together, and we still don't. We still don't. We still in root. Don't let nobody tell you otherwise. If they do, they lie. If they lie. The only debt I am to have is the debt of to, 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 to love and to continue to, do, to continue to do that. And in order to love, you got to forgive. There's no love without forgiveness. There's no forgiveness without true love. It's the other side. It's one coin with two sides. And they always have to operate together. Father, in Jesus' name, in the name of love, compassion, peace, mercy, kindness, forgiveness, obedience, submission, humility. In that name, in that name, we pray today amongst your saints. Those people, Father God, who have the power to pray with me because they have been delivered and they know you did it. So when we ask you, Father, for the deliverance of all those who stay in here, on Periscope, in ATL, Facebook, wherever they may see this service. Father, we pray with them. We encourage them with our, the strength of our hearts and our spirit. Because we know, Father God, you are able to bring them out because you've done it for us. So we pray, Father God, from the place of authority where our experience with you has demonstrated that we in you are more than conquerors. Say this with me. You are more than a conqueror in Christ that has delivered you. Y'all saying this? Listen, they saying this to you now. Listen with your ears. You are more than a conqueror through Christ who delivered you. So for all those who are standing, I don't know what troubles you may see this week, but say to your troubles, speak to your troubles. I am more than a conqueror through Christ who strengthens me. I got through a battle, my previous battles, and I'll get through this one. Because the same God that led me out of that first Egypt and that first set of bondage, I'm depending on that same God to lead me out of this one. Father, I trust you because you showed me yourself so that I could pray to you and believe what I'm saying by faith. By faith in God's consistency in your life. Believe what you've heard. And then live it. But you live it because you say it first. I know how I feel, but this is who I am. I know what I see, but this is who I am. Father, you have the final word as to who I am and who I shall become. We thank you and we praise you forever and ever. All power, authority, and honor is yours. In the name of love, peace, courage, humility, and forgiveness. Hallelujah and amen.